Hi everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screener. Today we're going to talk about a new gem that I bought, which is a copper gem called Trigon Metals. So the chart looks like it's going up. Had uh, a peak here and then went back down. So probably this is going to keep on rising. Now, why did I buy this? Because I like copper. Um, even though I think that copper might go back down below four, in the long term, copper is only going higher. So let's go over the copper checklist first. Okay, there is a decline in real economic activity that could bring copper down a bit, but look at how strong this is. Even with this decline, copper manages to stay pretty high. Copper to gold ratio, yeah, we still have high bond yields, so that's better for copper than gold. This is the most important one. This has triggered me to buy Trigon Metals today. So, as you can see here, copper inventories keep on dropping. They're not going up. And compared to last year, it's actually widening now. So the gap is widening in inventories. So this is going to keep on dropping, as you can see here. Goldman Sachs forecast is somewhere here, below the 400,000 400, tons, which is exactly where it is now. So this will keep on dropping. So that's bullish. China is also reopening. Um, power consumption is probably rising. Credit impulse, also important. So we have new credit impulse data was very positive. So copper should be going higher in the coming months. Yet year over year, we are barely in the positive, but at least it's not negative. So we should stay around the $4 uh, in the coming months with some upside potential due to high credit impulse from China. Shanghai, also important. Shanghai is breaking out. It's not in a recession. China is not in a recession. So you have this triangle pattern and it's, I think this is going to break out. And that will be very positive for copper. Even the GDP in the US is positive. It's 2%, so there is growth. So I don't see any recession coming. I don't see it. I see stocks moving higher. I see copper usage going up by 50% in 10 years. So demand is going to rise. Copper deficits are coming, as you can see here. Deficits. Here as well, we are going into deficit. Now, this was the only thing that, that I'm negative about copper, that the scrap copper premium is still very high here, so that's typically a top. Um, these are the bottoms. But I mean, look, look at this. 
it can go from here to here and and copper price would only go down like 10 cents so this is short term movement so this could come back here and then copper would maybe fall to here these are short term movements the big picture i think is still this here this is the big picture inventories as they decline then the copper price needs to go up so that's why i'm now buying some copper mines seasonality is a bit weaker for the next two months but then we go back up Australian dollar is bottoming out. Imports are not that great, but it's not like it's crashing. Baltic dry is positive, uh, rising a bit. Yeah, Danny says that we are going up by 10% this year, so that's also positive. We don't see any deflation here on the 10-year break-even inflation so that's also good for copper Zillow rent is starting to bottom out economic in index is positive so also positive for copper so there are a lot of things to be positive about China airplane data is also rising as you can see here rising so china is reopening housing market is strong in china baltic dry is rising everything looks good for copper so that's why we are going to initiate a position in trigon metals so what is the valuation market cap 40 million So small cap, but look at the upside, five times EBITDA. So currently we are a bit overvalued for 2023, but one year later, you can see the upside going from 16 million upside to 200 million. So that's an upside of 3x, 4x. So I think this can double easily if they can execute their plan. And I will talk about that later. So this is the first phase for next year. And this is the second phase for 2025. So plenty of upside can be a 10x if they execute. So what are they executing? They have this copper mine, which they own 80% of. Um, Sprott owns 20% of the company and important, we have Larissa Sprott, who is a director. So this tells me a lot. His daughter is on board of this company, which is very important. Um, AISC is around 3.5. So this is for the open pit that they are now starting to produce from. So they are uh, in process of mining the open pit right now in May. 3.5 that's high cost okay but they are already financed to go here to 2.5 cost that's a huge decrease in cost and that's also visible here in this upside 
then the cost will decrease even more to 2 AISC and then we go to here with a 10x upside. So producing mine, 6 million pounds for this year, going up 5x, 5 to 6x in production by next year, probably end of next year, um, and reducing costs. Then doubling again from 40 to 60, that's yeah, 50 percent, and decreasing costs. And that will give a double in valuation. So we have a plan here to reduce costs and increase production. That's what I like to see. CAPEX is very low, 20 million, that's the initial CAPEX, is already paid for. So no dilution necessary. Mine life is around 12, that's good. It's not a 50 year mine life, but I think this is acceptable to buy. 600 million pounds, so they can easily uh, mine like 10 years from this. Also important, 2% grade, very high grade. They have some silver as well uh, and lead, but 2% grade is very high. That's the underground grade. They don't have uh, 43101 yet, but there is a feasibility study coming up in the coming months. And as they dewater the underground, they will further drill out the resource and prove it. Also, I like this here. Infrastructure is worth around 100 million. Its market cap is only 40 million. So infrastructure alone should be worth double the current market cap. The cable alone is worth 40 million scrap value. Okay, so open pits is going to be done by mostly contractors. The underground is 100% uh, internal employees. Everything is financed by Sprott. So if they don't have enough money, Sprott will probably add some more money to this. So we are covered on the capital side. Here you can watch some of the videos. So Sprott owns 20%, a lot of institutionals, more than 50%. So that's, that's uh, very good. It shows us that, that the institutionals, uh, the money is pouring in. So here you see the, the growth. Two years open pit, then we add the underground phase one and phase two. There is an offtake, so the silver stream is already bought. So they they can't they can buy it back uh, for 50% for 28 million dollars. Yes, this is a stream. So I have also taken into account these numbers, deleted it from the revenue. Here is the production profile. We are currently here in 2023. Production will increase to about 30 million pounds and then to 60 million pounds. So a lot of growth coming. The only problem is execution. So can they do it? I'm not sure, but if they can execute, then this is going to be an easy 10 bagger. I would like to take that bet. Costs, as I said, are coming down to under $2 per pound. That's a very good cost. That's below the average cost curve for copper mines. I like that. 
Um, so first they do the open pits, then they are going to bring this online underground, which is already paid for. They're already going to dewater this underground shaft. Uh, then the second phase will be working on this west shaft. Here you can see uh, the grade, very high grade, with some lead and even some silver. And 2% is a very high grade, uh, comparable to capstone mining's uh, Kozamin mine, which is also 2% grade, and those are very profitable mines underground. So comparable. Um, open pit is 1%. But that's that's also very high grade for an open pit. And here we have comparables. And the funny thing is that we have Aero copper, also capstone copper is here. Copper Mountain, which is bought out, so you can't buy this anymore. And I really like all of these companies, especially capstone. But look at how cheap trigon metals is so trigon is on an enterprise value to production let's say four times cheaper than capstone copper um, to a resource perspective it's also very cheap compared to capstone copper and here you see the production growth is much higher 5x production growth 5 to 6x so yes i like capstone copper but i like trigon much more because of these metrics so this is the roadmap we are currently here starting to produce from the open pits so there is cash flow coming in, very important. They are procuring dewatering equipment and then dewatering can start at the end of the year for six months and then production will start next year. In the meantime, they are also working on the other underground phase two uh, development uh, as well as dewatering. Okay, so that's that will take a bit more of a ramp up phase. The first phase is much easier. Um, stop preparation is much faster, so this will come online much easier. But uh, they are doing this in parallel phase one and phase two and phase two will come online in 2025 so there's a plan let's see if they can execute this plan and then we will see an easy 10x in two years at the current copper price let's say and now it becomes a very fun let's say we have five copper with five copper, we will go up six folds from phase one. And then we will go to, let's say 600. That's a 20 fold. 15 fold, right? Um, some say that copper will go to 5.5. .5. Then we have an upside from 40 million market cap to 800 million. It's a 20 fold. So plenty of upsides, 20x. I'm already happy if it doubles in a year or two, let alone a 20x. So there is not a lot of downsides. Uh, safety margin is 
looking good. Already financed. And I didn't even talk about their exploration project. They also have an exploration silver project in Morocco that they can explore and eventually sell. So I'm not even looking at that. There's plenty of icing on the cake. Equity. Okay, so the debt, they don't even have debt. Look at this. This is just a streaming agreement. I don't take this into account. There's no debt. There's a lot of cash. Probably cash is now around 10 million, 50 million. Uh, but there is cash, there is property and equipment. So if we don't take into account this here, then equity is around 50 million. So below book value currently. So it's a very good buy. So take a look and I'll see you in the next video.